Hey y'all, greetings from Middle Tennessee. Not much has changed since last time. We're still in a big mess in our country, but I hope everyone's hanging in there and looking for the good and the great opportunities that we've been given to spend with our families and loved ones. Um, I always struggle with trying to find a project that hasn't been done you all know there's only so many ways you can create a snowman or a Santa or whatever it is, but we all have our own takes. And so today I thought that I would um, share one of my little squatty trucks with you. That is charcoal kicking. He doesn't have much space with me sitting where I am. But anyway, y'all know that I usually do the videos as I'm working on the design. And uh, well, magical fibers everywhere. And so this is no exception. But we're going to turn this over. I'm going to show you how I did the background. Oh my goodness, I've had it on the floor. And you know who's wallered on it. So I'll get that cleaned up a little bit. But I wanted to share a few things with you first. Um, this has been a really neat surprise for me. Um, I got it at CD Wood. And Chris Hoy had done a short video on them and had them on sale. So I got one. And it really is good for erasing marks. And even if you put some water on it, it can erase the paint. The other one, I think I've shared this with you before, is the Princeton Select Fix-It. You add a little water to it. And I have removed a whole row of writing with this. Just work slowly and carefully and it did not remove the paint underneath. It removes it in layers, so if you press hard, you're going to remove more and probably damage your work. But these are two tools that I think everyone should have nearby. They're very, very handy. This we'll be using today as Punchinella, and this is nothing new. Sandy LaFleur uses it a lot, and I think she sells it, so if you need some, you can see her. We're going to use two different bat stencils. This one is from T Tracy Moreau. I love her stencils. Love them. And this is um, from Plum Purdy, and I like her stencils too. Then this is from Laurie Speltz. You can tell <laughs> I have used the heck out of this thing. It's time for me to try to clean it again. But this came from Laurie Speltz. Everyone needs a circle stencil. This we've talked about before. Laser translucent vellum. I do not have, well, I do have a laser printer, but it's um, <laughs> in the box where it's been for several months. <sighs> That's a long story. But this is um, vellum. And even though it's laser, it works perfectly on my inkjet cheap HP printer. And if you don't have a printer, you can trace over it. This is a design that's coming out in the next e -Zine. But um, I just drew over it with a permanent um, pencil, uh, pen. And it works fine, but this is so handy to have, especially if you have layers that you're painting. And so, those are just some little handy tidbits, I thought, that could help you. Let's see if I can get this cleaned up. I should have checked this before I got the video, but I threw it down on the ground a while ago. Sorry about the shaking. And didn't even pay attention to what I was doing. And that's what happens. Charcoal thinks if it's on the ground, it's his toy. And he's right. He's right. It's his. Okay. I'm going to start with the Punchinella. And I'm going to tell you something that I've discovered 
while I was painting the front. You probably are going to want to transfer your design on this before you do the background because I'm using two, I guess they're new products from um, Deco Art. It's pearls paint and it gives it a nice little sparkle. If you don't have this, just use plain old paint in another color that'll show up from your background. Um, the the desert turquoise just kind of gives it a, a shimmer on here, and I like it. You can also buy the medium to make any color that you have with the pearl sheen to it. But I got these two colors just to see what they were like. And I'm going to put them... Put just a little bit. It's not going to take much. And I'm not going to use the orange till the end, but I think it'll be just fine. Um, bright orange and desert turquoise. I reuse my plates for those that are concerned about me destroying our environment. I bet I save water in ways that most people don't, so I'm not too... Worried about how I destroy the earth. I think I'm a pretty good caretaker. But just so you know, I reuse these when I want to stencil. So we're going to start the background by randomly stenciling this. And I'm not going to I'm not going to waste a lot of time doing this because you've got it. But I load I load my brush, whip it in sometimes oops showing my gray hairs <laughs> sometimes I pounce it but this I'm just doing it and if you have your design already transferred you're going to go around it as best you can if you get some in there that's okay the reason that I I'm saying to transfer your design first is there's some kind of finish in this pearl paint that does not accept the transfer paper. What I did was I just used an old piece of sandpaper and sanded it lightly, and it was fine. So if you want to go ahead and do your background first, that's fine. The next thing that I'm going to do, and why did I use two different stencils of bats? Well, because <laughs> the Plum Purdy had some... Um, had some moon and stars on it, and I really wanted those in there, so that's why I did it. Let me see if I can find Plum Suede. This is the next color. I'm using mostly the Chris Hoy stencil brushes because you can rinse them out, dry them off, and use them again. It takes a little while to get used to that, but it's kind of neat. So, you can see on here, I left the sun here so you could see that I didn't use all of these. I just used some of them, and I did not get that paint out good enough, but we're just going to fake it. Don't do as I do, do as I say. Is that right? That's not so bad. Then, I came back, and still wet, with the Plum Purdy, because, like I said, I wanted some of the stars in the moon. And I put those in between. There's no rhyme or reason. Just do it. And if you want to put a couple of her bats in there, that's fine too. And if it goes over one, eh, no biggie. Let's see, and that's all that I'm going to do. So that's the two, and the, I'm going to use the punchinella again. I am going to get that off while it's still wet. See if you make a mistake. No biggie. It's just paint. Then I'm going to end with the bright orange pearl paint. And I'm going to work it in between all these.
If you don't have any punchinella, if you have um, a circle stencil, you can do a bunch of little um, circles. If you don't like bats, you can use leaves. Or if you've got a pumpkin stencil, you can do pumpkins. Anything that's fallish or anything that you like. Or if you don't want anything in the background, that is absolutely your choice too. So, that's how we did the background. Now, you can see I've put the lettering in. I like to put lettering in first so that I can kind of um, see how to fit the other elements into it. You can tell <laughs> charcoal was all over this. Those of you who do not know who charcoal is, charcoal is in my six-year-old black lab. And he is very, very special and loved very much by his aunts on Facebook. So if you don't know who charcoal is, you've just missed out. Okay. I like to put a base coat on when I'm using certain colors to help make them brighter, especially if you use um, a darker background or a background that has a bunch of elements like this is it helps to cover them up better this right here you can see where I put only the orange on this and I'm using warm sunset I know paint is hard to get right now they are manufacturing right now at um, deco art so it should be available soon but if you don't have warm sunset it's one of the new colors Use another orange that you have. I was going to use cadmium orange to do this, but then I was looking for um, the perfect color to base coat underneath, and I found melon, and I thought, oh, I really like this warm sunset, so that's what I did. When I base coat my little squatty trucks, I use both what's going to be the color and my chosen base coat and I kind of mix them together to get different shades of the colors so that I don't have to redraw the lines but if you use your um, translucent vellum it's not a big deal you can retrace again or if you do like I do and tape my pattern on here you can do it. You can retrace your lines real easy. But I'm a lazy painter, I think I've discovered. So <laughs> this is what I've done. This color right here is what the warm sunset would look like all by itself. And you can see it's not covered up very good. That the melon helps to cover it up better. And I haven't done a really good job <laughs> of this. And that's okay. But um, I think it gives you a better finished color. It makes your colors brighter. The first thing I'm going to do is if I can find where I put. Nope, I didn't have it. It was the other color I used. I'm going to grab some um, soft black. And we're going to um, put the tires in first. We're going to stencil them. If you have a stencil, if you do not have a circle stencil, simply paint in the design. But this is so much easier. The reason I want to do the tire first is you can tell right from the start that is not straight and it is not going to be a good match. <laughs> And this is why I use the stencils, because it's so much easier. Let's see if I can figure out which one I used. Uh, I think that's the one I used. So, I'll put that down a minute. I'm going to load my brush. I am sorry, y'all. I've got this attached to my table. I did not think that out, so I hope you don't get too seasick. Ugh, I am so sorry about that. Just keep trying to get better at doing this and I just don't seem to get any better so anyway it's 
it's going to take two or three coats. And you can see right there, there's a little gap between the fender and the tire. And honestly, I could live with that. But I do try to do a neat job. I'm going to pick up some more paint and try this again. It's not dry enough. I don't want to turn on the hair dryer. So we're going to use the old-fashioned pan. And to um, fill in that gap, I would just grab some more of the melon. And oh, if I can find a number two. I use my number two round brush for just about everything. Here's number two. If y'all can hear a funny sound in the background, it's charcoal snoring. <laughs> and there you go. Now if we can get this to dry again, I'll show you how I figure out where to put the hubcap. And I'm going to use the circle stencil again, as you can see. I know, you're probably saying, use the hair dryer and go on with it. <laughs> and I use slate gray this and I'm going to use the smaller stencil brush I kind of look to make sure that it's not shiny. If it's not shiny, usually you've got it loaded enough. Now, if my stencils were completely clean, and they are, I mean, they're pretty much, but it's not as good as it could be. I eyeball where I think the center is. And I use, this is another one of my um, products that I love. The General's Charcoal White Pencil. I love these things. You can see I've used it a little bit. really need to sharpen it. But I eyeball where I think the center is. And use... I think this is the one I used. Yeah. Use my little stencil. I flicked that paint off when I was flicking that stencil hair out of the way and I've got to cover up that dent. You can see that pretty much is in the center and it'll need another coat too. 
I used two coats and then I finished with a little white on it to give it some um, highlight. While I had my stencil brush, well dry brush, because after I do that I dry brush it with the gray. I did the little cat's head too while I was doing that. So that pretty much catches you up to what I've done so far. And I'm going to start base coating this. And there is no need for me to sit here and base coat this. Most of you, I think, are in intermediate painters and don't need it. But you can see I used bleach sand to undercoat all of these. I'm going to paint the um, pumpkin, spiced pumpkin. This is a cupcake with some candy corn, and I think I'll paint that green and paint the frog green. And I think I will use Irish moss and paint the stem Irish moss. I'll probably put another coat of bleach sand on this little ghosty that's going to be coming out of the um, cupcake. Maybe you can tell a little more if I show you this. I'm going to have some caramel, a caramel apple, and paint the sticks. I use the stencil again, circle stencil, to um, do my lollipop, and I'll have lots of little colors swirled around in that. And I'm going to base the, coat, the um, truck with the straight, warm sunset. Again, the reason I do this is to make it brighter. And who doesn't want their colors popping? I painted the little light and the little exhaust pipe slate gray, too. So I think that catches you up, and I'm going to do some painting while y'all are getting a snack, I guess. <laughs> so I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.